Hello again everyone. Today I am going to be profiling one fountain pen ink and this is from Kyo Iro and this is a cherry blossom color. Uh, it's it's a particular, it, it's a cherry blossom of somewhere but I can't remember and it's not written on the box in English. So I'm going to put a, um, a link to this down below. I purchased this from Pen Boutique but I've seen it in other places as well. Uh, this had been on my wish list for a little while to kind of try it out. One of the things that I'd heard about these inks is that they tend to be a little dry. So we'll see if that pans out to be that way today. Uh, so this is Kyo Iro, like I said, and it says best selected colors of Kyoto. And I think that this label kind of indicates what the color is going to be or similar to that because it is a cherry blossom color. And it does say on the back made in Kyoto, Japan. I'm going to open up this box and I'm going to be doing the sample. Oh, yeah, these boxes, man, they really, they really don't want you to get into these boxes. I almost always end up just ripping them open. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here's this lovely bottle here. I'll have to write what it is in English for my own reference because it is not written in English on there. And then again, you have this little tag in here that talks about that in Japanese as well. So I'm going to go ahead and close up that box, put it up to the side. I'll probably save the label from this, but probably not save the box. All right. So I'm going to be testing this ink or sampling this ink in my usual ink swatch book here, which I will put a link down below to the setup for this, um, for this traveler's notebook from Chic Sparrow here. And then I'm also going to be putting the ink on one of these little cola ring swatch sheets. So let's go ahead and get in here. I have a spot already saved for this ink down here at the bottom of these other <laughs> Robert Oster inks. And I'm gonna put that little swatch sheet over to the side for right now. The tools that I'm using today uh, is this automatic pen, which there's a link to this in the setup video that I put a link to below, as well as a link to this glass dip pen that I'm using today. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I also have a pot of water and a paper towel off to the side so that I can rinse off my tools. But since I'm just doing one ink, I'm not going to be rinsing as much as if I had multiple colors. So let's go ahead and, mm, the jar's a little tight too, but that's okay, we've got it. All right, so already that's looking really pretty. I'm gonna put this off to the side here. I'm going to zoom in a little so you can see a little better as I'm making this swatch. Get these things aligned so you have the best view there. Okay, so I'm going to start with the automatic pen. Just dip that in. Oh, that's beautiful. So pink inks have really been on my radar lately, and I've really been liking them. So, and this is a beautiful pink. Okay. I'll go ahead and rinse off that tool for now and just do the card separately. Let's go ahead and do this swatch and then move on to the card. So I'm going to call this Kyo Iro. I'm just going to call it Cherry Blossom for now. That's very nice. It doesn't feel dry coming off of the glass dip pen and you actually get quite a nice line but you you never can tell until you really put it into a pen so uh, I, I don't have this in a pen already and I haven't put it in a pen yet I just got it but I will do that at some point soon and uh, I may do a follow-up on that one but it's a beautiful color just beautiful I will put this up to the camera and then I'll do it again towards the end after I've done the other sample so that you can see what it looks like when it's completely dry, because it should be completely dry by then. All right, so in the meantime, let's move on to this little swatch sheet here. We should still have enough room to see there. Starting with the automatic pen again. And I marked off the square with a stencil so that I could put the swatch of color into a little square here.
This seems beautiful. It seems to flow just fine off of both the automatic pen and the glass dip pen. So I'm wondering if maybe it's not as dry as I thought. Let me get a little bit more there. Usually I only need to do two dips for these little squares and it looks like that's gonna be the case again. All right, put that there, rinse off my, my automatic pen. And that is just gorgeous. It looks a little bit different as it always does on different papers, but it still looks really, really gorgeous on here. I'm really, really stoked about this color. <laughs> okay, and again, this is little ear roll and again I'm gonna just call it cherry blossom and there we go and then I'm gonna try and do an ink ring I get various uh, results with different ink bottles so let's see if we can do it with this one Normally I put it almost all the way tight, flip it upside down, and then try to immediately put the paper there. Oh, that worked perfectly. There we go. Sometimes they turn out well. All right. So this, I think, is a super beautiful pink. Just really, really beautiful. It has a little bit of shading properties, which is nice. And you can even see that in the writing a little bit. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, so let's go back to the sample in the book here. <clears throat> you can see now that it's completely dry. It is a really lovely color. I don't think this is gonna be too light to write with. That's uh, sort of something that I've been searching for with pinks is a pink that's not gonna be too light when I write with it. And this is just gorgeous. Let's see. So I have actually gotten a few other pinks recently. Oops, you can't see that. This is from Birmingham. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that. Duquesne Incline for this particular pink. That one's really beautiful. As you can see, I put it in a vanishing point with a stub. It's, it's working pretty well, and actually, at, this was right after I filled it. Once it primed a little bit, it was a little bit darker. And uh, then I have another couple from Birmingham. This is Mountain Laurel and Chrysanthemum. But these are both kind of like funky pinks, like they've got a little funk going on in the color. But this one is really sort of a slightly magenta-leaning, I would say, pink, and it's just it's gorgeous. I'm really, really happy with that. Let me see if I have any other pinks that I could show you. Um, the Birmingham pinks seem to be the ones that I've been gravitating towards. I don't think I really have any. I do have some. I've, purples have been also uh, something that I've been really interested in. This is Mont Blanc's uh, Cobalt Violet, which is also a beautiful thing. But all right, there you go. Just based on this sample, and again, I will um, put an update if I am able to tell you if it's drier than, <laughs> than it indicates here as I'm using it. But, uh, but if I haven't done it by then, I won't have an update. But by the time I post it, I mean. So there you go. And then let's go back to the card, which is almost dry now as well. There's still a little bit damp where there's some overlap, but it's just, oh, it's just a gorgeous pink. I really, really love that. Okay, well, that's all I had for you today. Feel free to like this video if you enjoyed it. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.